Uh, all right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I don't really have that much uh, time left, but uh, I'll see what I can do. So uh, my name is uh, Andito. I also work for uh, DG Lab in Tokyo, and uh, yeah. And uh, so this uh, talk plus um, the talk from Kale is actually so we do a, a workshop called the BC2, the Blockchain Core Camp, which is a three-day workshop <laughs> similar to this, where we uh, teach people how to use the Bitcoin uh, and stuff. And uh, this is basically a sort of amalgamation between like several sessions at once. So, uh, well, you know, it's uh, we usually we go like hands on, like very slowly on this, but uh, I'm sure you can keep up. <laughs> anyway, so there's many parts to uh, Bitcoin. There's the you know the, there's the cryptography part. There's mining. There's wallets. There's a bunch of stuff. Or maybe if you're a little bit more like me, you kind of want to build stuff on top of it. You know, to use the Bitcoin itself. So today, or this session is particularly focused on that. So uh, generally, you uh, interact with the Bitcoin network through the RPC app. So, sorry, sorry, so the RPC in uh, Bitcoin D, and that's what it is today. So uh, the the purpose of this uh, particular uh, talk is to f the, have a first look at interacting with the Bitcoin uh, RPC itself. If you have experience of uh, uh, compiling and playing around with the with the RPC CLI, this is probably not um, not particularly new for you. But uh, hopefully, you at least pick something else. For people that haven't done it, uh, you should definitely try it. So this is particularly useful if you want to develop your own apps uh, on top of Bitcoin Core. Um, as a basic, so in this session, this is basically a basic uh, overview of the Bitcoin as it relates to the uh, corresponding RPC. And then uh, there's also an example of uh, if you want to make a simple modification to the RPC, and so it gets you familiar uh, into the RPC source code, even though maybe you won't plan to do this or you don't really have, uh, you don't really want to mess around too much with the Bitcoin core code, but uh, you can at least like learn something uh, from the, you know, of course, from learning more about the underlying uh, source code. And last is uh, the RPC app. Some people. Uh, have downloaded from the GitHub. I've seen that, and uh, so that's basically an example app that uh, incorporates the business logic with the Bitcoin uh, node backend. And uh, uh, Kali thought uh, talked about the threat models and stuff. So that is basically a uh, a test, sort of a test framework that uh, tries out those different like scenarios, and you can sort of solve the problems. And like, okay, so this is sort of how you how you think about these problems. So uh, well, in general, if you if you don't, I'll, I'll show like the examples and stuff like that. You can, if the people can follow along, can follow along. Or if not, of course, just even beyond this session, you can contact me or any of the trainers are willing to help if you uh, want to try out things out yourself. Of course. All right. So basically, I'm giving you homework. <laughs> Anyways, uh, before all that, uh, have you tried downloading Bitcoin, the source code? Did you have it make it compile? And uh, if you have problems, of course, you can just Google it or uh, all of the trainers here are, have done it before, so uh, they might, uh, they hopefully, they'll be happy enough to help you. So you can contact me, of course, I'll help you as much as I can. Um, even if you don't plan on doing like all of this stuff, it's pretty good just to get an experience of trying to compile it and see what kind of problems would show up. All right, so uh, a bit of an overview. I don't know if uh, John uh, Newberry talked about this, but there. Uh, three networks in the in the uh, Bitcoin. So the first one is the main net. Uh, when you run uh, Bitcoin CLI or Bitcoin D, uh, just as 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 it is, it runs on the main net. Of course, I don't need to caution you again, but uh, it's worth putting down is that it deals with real money. So don't uh, do anything stupid, basically. Second one, there's a second uh, network called the testnet, which if you append the uh, hyphen testnet argument, it goes on the testnet. So generally the same features, uh, the mining difficulty is greatly reduced, and the BTC has, has zero value, which actually makes it valuable because we can play around with it. And uh, if you need some, I also have some testnet coins and stuff that I can share too if you want to play around with that. And uh, the uh, caveat for that is of course, um, people mess around with it and sometimes, you know, uh, do, do new things on it, so it breaks from time to time. And the last one is what we are gonna uh, assume for, particularly for this session to use, is the reg test, which is basically it's on your own local environment on your own computer, and because it's on your own computer, you're the only node there, uh, and I'll, I'll show you how to set up like different, uh, plus uh, adding nodes to yourself as well, and of course, because you're the only one there, you have to mine all the blocks yourself. 
Great. <coughs> so, uh, before running, there's also this link uh, at, for running Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin has a configuration file at Bitcoin Cough. If you look at the link, there's also, uh, it tells you where it's generally located, depending on whether you're on OSX, uh, uh, Linux machine, or uh, Windows. So here's what I find uh, useful when, especially if you're messing around with the code and stuff, you, you set the reg test as one, or if you want to, you're using testnet, you set testnet, and then setting the RPC user and password, I guess. Uh, and of course, don't forget to change all of this stuff into something more secure uh, whenever you're trying to deploy something that's real. And I find this also useful, the print to console, because it gives you like nice outputs. Uh, from the Bitcoin D, so you see if there's uh, some stuff going on. And this is particular for the like RPC app, and uh, if you're trying to connect to the RPC, sometimes you get like these like uh, connection refuse kind of errors. So it's best to explicitly set. Uh, so the default is like the, uh, for RPC is 8332, uh, and the port is 8333. And you set the server as one, so it acts, so it uh, it's responsive to uh, outside RPC uh, commands. And uh, usually that, that fixes it. And for today, in this example, I, uh, this is my uh, Bitcoin comp. I just put it as such that uh, if you want to try it out. All right, so uh, if you open a terminal and then you go to wherever your Bitcoin is compiled, which I'm assuming you can uh, run Bitcoin D, uh, you can use the, uh, the Bitcoin configuration that I had before, or you can just run it as such. It probably doesn't show anything. So uh, if you run like hyphen print to console, if you don't have a Bitcoin configuration file, it it will show these similar things. So what happens here is uh, you know the preliminary, pre preliminary stuff that is happening. Um, there's a bunch of stuff. There's uh, um, if you start without like a wallet, it'll, it'll create your wallet, and then it tries to. This one I have a, a wallet dot that uh, file already, so it's going to use that, and then uh, it tries to get the uh, the blocks and stuff. All right. You can also run it as a as a daemon in the background using the uh, the daemon uh, uh, argument as well. So this is the the first outputs basically. Uh, if you want, you can you can quick check in like a different window. You can run like a get blockchain info, and uh, you should get something like this. This should get something similar. If it's like a reg test, then it shows that the, the chain is reg test. Uh, it'll show like main or test net, depending on where you are. Right now, I don't have anything, so the blocks and everything is zero, and you know, and all the general stuff that you get. I'm kind of rushing along, and uh, if you want to to go through like the list of commands, you can run help, and it, it'll show you all the list of commands. There's also a list uh, in this link. And as Kali and stuff mentioned before, and John as well, the generally the, the account related stuff in the wallet are uh, buggy, so uh, don't use that. Uh, an alternate method, because uh, uh, before, um, before uh, I, I realized that some people might not have uh, compiled for uh, compiled themselves. You can still do it if you're on OS X. You can run something like this, and it it it'll open the. Uh, uh, the app as well, and you can do, uh, if you have the Bitcoin configuration as I configured, uh, as my configuration before, you can run something like a curl, or you can open the API reference, and there's a bunch of like samples for like libraries and wrappers and stuff like that you can use to, uh, to uh, connect to the uh, RPC. All right, now uh, mining, quote unquote. Because you're on the reg test network, you have to generate one, so um, you have to, you know, you mine yourself, so. You just, you have to generate one. There, you got one mine. If you do a blockchain info, then uh, it shows that you have one block inside your, uh, your, your blockchain. Uh, real mining is, of course, completely different, and I'm no expert in this, so you should probably talk to James more about it, and he explained quite a bit more about that. So I'm gonna skip this part. So the wallet, um, as mentioned before and worth repeating again, is that uh, Bitcoin is an open system. So management of your keys is uh, one of the most important security points in this thing. One important thing is is that, so there's something to keep in mind if you're like creating like a service or an app uh, around the, the Bitcoin, Bitcoin uh, technology, is that if you don't control your keys, it's really not your money. 
uh, common pattern is that uh, you have, for example, you have an exchange service that you trade in like US dollars or yen or something to BTC and you are, you get an account that says, okay, you have one BTC now, but you, the keys are kept inside the, uh, the exchange service. And this has many problems. We've seen many of the incidents before. Don't really need to repeat it again, like Moncox, Bitfinex, and whatnot. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, in contrast, if you run your own Bitcoin D wallet, uh, you have to take several steps to protect yourself. Of course, you have to make sure you're on a computer uh, free from uh, malware. And uh, another good thing is uh, you can you encrypt your, H your hard disk and you can also encrypt your wallet, but uh, for this particular example, don't do it, especially if you're, uh, if you're like just still praying around because then you need uh, to pass on the passphrase every time you want to access to your wallet, so that gets kind of annoying, so you should do, just do that last. All right, so uh, if we try to send our zombie DC, even though it's just sending it to yourself, uh, you do like a get balance, you get zero, even though we already mined. Why? Because I think if anybody remembers that uh, you can only use the block subsidy after 100 blocks. This prevent um, uh, like reorgs if uh, reorgs happen in the meantime, and you can like double double spend something. So you can only get money after uh, 100 blocks if you're the miner. So to fix that, I guess we can go generate 100. So we got now 101 blocks, and now if we check our balance, hey, we have 50 bitcoins. Right. So uh, now let's try to send some BTC. If you want to send some BTC, you ge generate the address. Get new address. All right now you have the address, you can... Uh, Copy this. You can. Uh, can you guys see it? Is it is it too small? It's not set to address. I think I'll make it bigger. Hold on. Set to address to this address. Let's send myself 1.2 BTC, for example. And then you have the transaction ID, and then. Uh, it's not really in it yet because then you have to mine it first before the uh, address, uh, before the transactions actually occurred. And there it is, it should be inside that block. So that's basically it. And uh, now the using the RPC commands to look a little bit more closer inside the blockchain. So as you recall, uh, the blockchain uh, is basically these chain of blocks. Some people like to draw the arrow on to the other side to the to the earlier block, some people right to the right. It doesn't really matter that much. I don't really care. But anyways, so but like inside the block, and uh, you have like this stuff. Uh, Jimmy uh, talked about it a little bit, and John talked about it a little bit. And to get inside of it, let's say if we if you run like get best block hash, you get like the most uh, recent block. And uh, you get that, which is the same number as the one on the top. And uh, you can get that block by using the command get block. Boom, and then you get the generally the same info that you would get in this chart. What's that? Oh, uh, previously, as I shown before, it, uh, if you run help, it will show you all the available commands. So it's also separated by like uh, wallet type commands, utilities, like um, and then like network types commands and uh, and these types of like blockchain type commands. So, all right, and you can see that inside it has a header, and uh, you could you could do the same thing with the get block header. And it will show you the header. I don't need to show that. I'm sure you can. Uh, it's generally just the same. All right, and uh, you can also check out inside the transaction. You can run a get get a transaction with a previously uh, you have the transaction ID, or you can run a get raw transaction, which gives you the serialized data of what that uh, transaction is. 
And uh, if you run get raw transaction with the TX ID and true in the end or one, you get a much nicer view of it. Right. So uh, addresses. Uh, generally, you have two different types of addresses with the P2P KH and the P2SH. Uh, again, John has talked about this. I'm basically just uh, repeating a lot of this stuff. But uh, <coughs> as you've seen before, you get the uh, get new address and then you do a send to address and you can send it. Uh, you can also do uh, get received by address for a particular address so you can see how much uh, money that has come uh, inside it, which is uh, useful if you're a business and you're uh, mon uh, monitoring, mon monitoring uh, particularly addresses uh, if you have like an invoice, for example. And uh, you can also append uh, the minimum confirmations there, uh, like how many confirmations that you ha you want to have on that address before you uh, before it returns a value. Like if if let's say you it already has one confirmation and uh, and uh, you expect six, it'll it'll still show it as zero. This uh, is useful later on if you want to continue on the RPC app that I uh, will introduce in the end. There's also new uh, SegWit supported addresses. Um, uh, if you want to do that on the uh, on the CLI, you can do uh, get new address and, and there's a command called the add witness address there. Where's my cursor? Oh, sorry, it's the same. It's add witness address. All right, SegWit witness is not enabled on network. Uh, apparently, on reg tests, it's activated after 430 block, 32 blocks. That info isn't really not much. There's like a couple uh, places where it's written in the, in the if you Google it. So this might come in handy. So if you do this, oh, sorry. So if you want to play around with like SegWit addresses isn't in your uh, reg test, uh, this is uh, necessary. There you go, and you have your uh, SegWit address. All right. Now, uh, again, how many, uh, many <laughs> almost all of the people have repeated this, uh, don't uh, use an address more than once. So do you, for uh, RPC pers perspective, just run uh, get new address every single time. And of course, there's a lot of problems with it. Now, uh, you only have one node currently, so that's not really fun. You want to connect with different nodes. And uh, you can just run uh, Bitcoin D again with a different uh, data directory with a different uh, uh, Bitcoin uh, uh, configuration file, uh, particularly the, the port numbers, the RPC port and port. For example, I have here, uh, I've already set it up that, oh, not this one. I have a, a different one set up in a, in a different uh, directory, and here now it's running. But um, currently they're not connected to each other, so you have to run uh, something called. Oh, sorry, this is this is the sample uh, Bitcoin configuration for the second node. I changed the RPC port into something different, and uh, to connect them, basically you uh, run add node, and then uh, it should do that. Let's see, here you go. So uh, here we run that one, add node, one try, and if you run uh, get connection count, it should say something like one, which means that it's connected to one other server. All right, so you have basically two nodes talk to each other, and if you look at the outputs here now, it's uh, the, the, the newer node caught up with the previous one because it already had like about 400 something blocks, so it's taking all that new info and then putting it into theirs. All right, so that's generally it for the CLI. Uh, I encourage you to, uh, of course, to try it out. You know, um, there's a bunch of commands there that I uh, skipped, and uh, yeah, just try it out and see what. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Was that? Oh, because uh, I ran the, for SegWit, I, I generated 432. I don't know if you saw this because I wanted to activate SegWit, so I generated 432 blocks there. All right. 
So uh, if you run it without a Bitcoin conf, uh, that's uh, sorry. Uh, if you let's say if you want to, because I'm I'm using the CLI, so it already it already has that info. It's using the Bitcoin conf co uh, configurations. But um, if you let's say do like a curl from like outside, you need uh, one of the authentication is uh, you need the uh, the user password, or if you're using some other library. I think for address you can see how much money is it, but uh, yeah, I don't think it shows like anything specific for it. And uh, generally, I think you need like the transaction ID and stuff. If I recall, I could be wrong, but yeah, but you're right. You you generally use it in that sense where you use it as a as a as a tool to help you find these kind of things, this kind of info. Okay. Uh, anything else? All right. Uh, there's nothing. Then this one might be, you know, if you want to try it out, I have the the sample solution in the in the uh, appendix. But uh, this might not be something that you would do. But uh, if you want, you can do it. So uh, the RPC itself, there's uh, several files that are connected. There's the Bitcoin CLI R CPP, and of course, quite obviously, there's a folder called RPC, and it has the files to. Uh, to do all this stuff. So it's generally, it's uh, split into whatever uh, thing that is doing. So it's uh, mining, is like mining stuff. And then uh, the blockchain, of course, is the blockchain stuff and whatnot. And uh, there's also several classes that it's connected to, which is like, uh, you know, a C amount and uh, things like that. And uh, this is just general software development stuff. If you want to play around on something, generally you just create a real branch and name it and, uh, you know, and work on that instead of the, the master branch. That's just common knowledge, I think. <laughs> now, debugging. And uh, whenever, because it's C++, of course, whenever something in code is changed, you need to restart the whole Bitcoin again, and then you run make, and then uh, you run the Bitcoin D again to see your changes, if nothing breaks, of course. And uh, if you're a more advanced user for uh, C++, there's also, uh, or C in general, there's also the LLDB and GDB. Uh, to do debugging, so you can look into that. This is just a quick uh, 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 reference if you if you need it. And uh, uh, when you do the configure, when you compile, you can also uh, have. There's also the uh, argument for enable debugging, and uh, sometimes because sometimes uh, it doesn't show the contents of a variable when you do uh, LLDB and GDB, and then you do a make clean, and usually this usually fixes it. All right. Uh, as a recap, uh, again, if you run Bitcoin CLI help, you see the list, list of usable commands. How about if I want a new command? How about if something, I put something else? For example, I want something called print. It just takes, it doesn't do anything, it just takes uh, whatever you put in there and just uh, spits it out again. It's just basically like an echo, which actually is, um, oh, okay, for example, like if I put uh, print hello, it should just show up hello. And the most obvious place to put it, of course, if you look around the code, is the miscellaneous CPP, which has like utilities and things that are not generally related to uh, Bitcoin in particular. In actuality, if you look at the code, it already has an echo command. And it's actually hidden. If you run uh, help, it doesn't show up. It's uh, specific just for you to try out. But you know, just for practice, if you want to do it just for kicks, um, you try to make a simpler one. For example, you just have like one argument, and uh, instead of a JSON, it spits out a JSON output. So you just have one, and this spits out a string. How about that? And as a hint, you can check out uh, the uh, miscellaneous CPP. You particularly in the bottom part, uh, if you look for the echo function, uh, I can show you real quick. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I have it already opened. So this is uh, the bottom part. It might be a little bit hard to see, but on the bottom part there's echo. That's how to do it. And then uh, under that there's uh, CRPC command commands. There's a list of it, so that should give you give you a clue on what to put in there. And uh, yeah, if you're stuck, there's also in the appendix there's a, a sample solution that you can try on. 
And of course, you can expand this if you want to do things, if you want to combine things, you know, if you want to, uh, if something like generally requires like two commands, you could create your own one that combines it and things like that. All right, uh, that's the RPC source code. Uh, I think I'm making pretty good time. So, uh, any questions on that one? No? All right, so, uh, last. Uh, right before lunch. So this is the RPC app. So this is something that we developed to help people sort of understand. And this is sort of combined with uh, Khaled's talk about the threat models and stuff, because this is basically the application of that. So the, from the previous session, uh, we learned that there's uh, developing for Bitcoin requires a different paradigm to compare to regular business apps. And uh, well, some people in the network is going to try to steal from you. And even if the case where there's no bad actors, even if you just mis mis make a mistake by yourself, it's costly and it's not reversible. So the purpose of this is basically just to get you thinking of several different scenarios where things can go wrong. Um, because we don't have time to go through it, you can uh, bring it home, try it out, uh, see what you think. It's based on Node.js, but it should be simple enough for you to figure out. Or you know, if you want to brush up a little bit on uh, JavaScript and some uh, asynchronous programming. But uh, yeah, it should just you know give you the fr frame of mind to think if you want to recreate or you want to make something in a different language. It should just uh, point you in into the right direction. The code is here. Uh, I already updated the README so you can try to install it. And uh, yeah, so that's basically it. And uh, I'll introduce it a little bit more. But uh, okay, generally about the RPC access itself. Um, so our RPC ex access equals access to your wallet. So if you give someone your RPC access, it's basically just handing over your wallet. It's not as simple as um, if you want to, okay, let me just build something and uh, publish in the App Store and have it connect to my Bitcoin D through the RPC. That's not going to work. So here's a, a sample of a, what a safer safe setup for an RPC app. So you have your full node, your Bitcoin node in there. And then you have the RPC app that talks to it, and then you have the users that talk to the user, the, the app, and as opposed to uh, directly to the Bitcoin node. So these are the steps. You set up a safe full node, of course. You have to check for, uh, you're, that you're on a, on a clean computer or a clean server. And then you create basically the RPC app that connects to that, place it uh, on the same server or a different one, depending on what you like. And then uh, you can build it, build the RPC app so that it connects outside to, of the server and the users connect through an app or something that talks to that one. So this one just focuses on two. Uh, you can do like one, three, four. <coughs> so uh, restrictions. Uh, by default, access outside of local hosts is blocked. And uh, there's two different ways for authentication. You can specify the Bitcoin con configuration or you uh, go directly through like the RPC user and R set RPC password. In, uh, for this instance, uh, we are, uh, for my example, I, it's already set in the Bitcoin configuration file. And uh, of course, uh, if you're gonna do it for real, don't use password as password. All right. So uh, every time you, if you change any of the configurations, so of course you need to restart Bitcoin. And uh, if you can't find it, uh, sometimes you just kill all uh, nine, uh, hyphen nine and it just shuts down all of Bitcoin and run it much more. So uh, about the RPC app, it's uh, a CLI only, a simple system. Basically it creates an invoice and it confirms the payments and it, uh, well, you have to fix it to, to make it do so, but protects against double spending and stuff. And it uses uh, two different thing, two uh, different libraries. Uh, the important ones are the it's a Bitcoin RPC wrapper just for the commands, and then uh, there's a test suite, there's test suite as well. Um, you can try this yourself. Uh, this is also on the uh, the README page that you can uh, put it on there and then run a, like a npm install, and hopefully you should get something like this if you run uh, RPC CLI. If you have any problems and stuff like that, there's probably not going to time to help today, but uh, I'll, I'll, I can come around and help you individually if you want. Or, you know, just even from tomorrow on, if you want to email me and stuff, it's fine. If you run NPM tests, it should uh, show something like this. Uh, so as a quick, um, so we already already put, put this in there. So if you run something, it, it'll just go through through it. And if there's any errors and stuff, it'll show you. But uh, here, basically, it's running a set of tests. It's trying to create uh, an invoice and try to make a payment, things like that. Right now, it's completely red because, well, you haven't uh, written it. 
and uh, yeah, so uh, try it out. There's uh, basically there's it's divided into three different tasks, and I have also the sample solution in the appendix too that uh, you can uh, you can play around with. So a bit a little bit of explanation. So uh, generally, if you're a company, this is a a very common scenario. You want a Bitcoin app that if it issues an invoice, it has probably these things, right? It has the invoice number, has a Bitcoin address that you want pe a person to pay into, and the the amount that you want people to pay into, and uh, more context or content for whatever it is, what the reason is, or item description, whatever. Inside this RPC app, particularly, uh, you can get a new. Uh, it has a, a Bitcoin. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. It's like a, there's a Bitcoin object that you can get, do like uh, get new address and gets you a new address, and here you uh, and then you can uh, and then you want to insert like the address, the amount, and content uh, into the invoice inside the database. So when someone sends a Bitcoin to the address uh, that is attached to a particular invoice, you want that uh, transaction recorded, and you want that saved as a payment into the database. This is uh, the way you do it inside like this app. You do payment insert. Uh, all the data. So it's generally the same if you want to uh, re, uh, make an application like this in uh, other languages as well. And if uh, that TXID you already exists, then you want to update the record. So, um, and then this is just still like general thinking like, okay, uh, if we make such a thing, there's uh, any changes to the payments, you want to update the status, right? So uh, you have maybe these kind of statuses, you have like zero, okay, nobody has paid yet. If you have, um, the exact amount in there, then you can assume that it's already paid. Or if you have less than that, then it's partially paid, or maybe somebody put more than needed into that, then somebody overpaid. This is just a, uh, just to get the idea. So, um, yeah, so this is just a summary of it. You append a Bitcoin address to a particular invoice, and then you find the transaction with the address of the recipient you recorded as a payment, and when, it, when it's equal, you want to set it as paid. Very simple. Still a lot of problems, right? Does uh, anyone know? Well, I think Kali already explained it, but uh, with the previous session in mind, and uh, double spending, right? So um, one scenario, you uh, somebody creates a transaction with the output already made. So um, you, they copy the transaction, but with a different one, with the a, with a output to their own wallet. You send the first one to me, the, the business, and I say, oh, okay. That looks good. I'm gonna mark it as paid. <laughs> but when uh, I say I send the message to him, I, it's paid. I uh, he sends the different the second transaction to everyone, and everyone picks up that instead, and I lost money. So there's also a different way to spend to double spend. They keep, uh, if it's just uh, thought uh, if the current app is just thought as it is is uh, uh, you can somebody send could send half of the amount, and then sort of change the transaction and do, does the same thing, even though they're basically the same transaction, and I received it twice, so I thought, okay, I, I got half of the amount twice, and okay, I, it's paid, I guess. And then you send it paid, it's like, uh -huh, you only received half of it. So, there are also other problems, but generally it is uh, related to whether or not you have to judge, okay, is something confirmed or unconfirmed? That's something that uh, your maybe your, your business side needs to talk about, not just the engineering side. But uh, you can have multiple things like, um, let's say, if you set like uh, less than, if it's confirmed in, in less than five blocks, you put it as a pending, and if it's six blocks or above, you uh, you put it as verified. You can have like different uh, statuses like uh, paid, pending, pending paid, and partial, and things like that. So this is to get you. Uh, thinking more about those kind of stuff. Anyways, well, if you want to play around, uh, of course, a little bit quicker than usual, but you know, we're going to lunch, so it's great. So in conclusion, um, have fun, you should play around, but uh, stay safe. So is there any questions up to this point before we wrap it up for the early session? I need to have a wallet on the computer before I can have What's that? Yes, you have to run, uh, Bitcoin D has to run on it. Okay, well, uh, of course, if there's any questions or anything, uh, I'll definitely I can go come over if you want to set it out, set, uh, set it up and uh, play around with it later. And uh, yeah, so thank you very much. <laughs>